Many plants, and especially their seeds and nuts, contain a lot of energy in the form of oils. And these are extremely useful to humans. We use them, um, for example, as fuels and things like biofuels. We use them as food. So we eat things like nuts and seeds. Um, and we also use them during the processes of cooking. And the reason why we can use them for cooking is that most oils boil at a higher temperature than water. So if you were boiling something, the maximum temperature you could cook that food at, the potatoes, whatever it is, is 100 degrees Cs. But if we imagine that, let's say, um, vegetable oil is gonna, is gonna boil at 180 degrees, okay, it means your food is cooking at a higher temperature and therefore the food cooks faster. What it also means is that the flavour of the food is going to change because you can get it hotter. Um, it's going to change the texture, it's going to make it crispier. On the outside, for example, uh, chips are a lot crispier than boiled potatoes or mashed potatoes. Crispier. Um, and it's also going to change the flavour. Um, the, the, uh, the food you're cooking is going to absorb some of the oil which will change the flavour and give it much more energy content if you cook your food in oil. More energy content. So there are several different ways we can get um, we can get the oil out of plants. The most simple one is simply to press or crush the, uh, the plant material and then press it. So if we had if we had our plant material in here, we could. Um, grind it up using a pestle and mortar okay, and we could really crush it up and then press the um, the ground up plant material between um, between two hard surfaces and that would squeeze the oil out but there are other methods too for example with uh, lavender oil we use a process called uh, distillation because a lot of these oils are quite sensitive to, to heat to temperature generally you don't want to heat them directly so the one we, we um, at least we used to use for things like lavender oil was looks a bit like this, and this is called steam distillation. And this has come up in the exam before. It, gave, it apparently gave you enough information to be able to figure it out, but I thought it was quite a tricky question, which is why I'm going through it now. Um, so what happens is you don't heat up the plant oil directly, you actually heat up water. And as the water um, boils, it gets forced through this tube here. What we will then do is cause some of the um, oil, the lavender oil that you want, um, to uh, evaporate to and be carried with the steam up out of this tube through a condenser, and they will both collect in your collection uh, um, conical flask here. Because the oil is less dense than water, it will sit on top. We say they, they are immiscible, and then you can separate uh, you tap the water off and separate the oil from it. So, yeah, this isn't mentioned as such in the specification, but it has come up as an exam question before. So just something for you to be aware of. There are actually two types of... Um, two types of fats, two types of oil. We have saturated oils and unsaturated oils. Um, and the structures look a little bit like this, it's just a very kind of hand wavy uh, way to draw them, but we have some form of section that's binding um, our carbon chains together. And if you had a saturated oil, it would have all single bonds, just like an alkane would do, but it looks a bit like this. And because it's got a very regular shape, all of these um, all of these sections can, can line up and it will form a regular arrangement and saturated fats are generally solids. So saturated fats, things like butter, things like lard, generally animal fats are saturated. They've got all single bonds and they're generally solids. And we tend to think of them as being um, less healthy than unsaturated fats. But with an unsaturated fat, what you actually get is double bonds in your carbon chains here. So you might have something like... Uh, 
this. This would be a polyunsaturated fat because it's got more than one. It's got more than one double bond in it, but you, they tend to be quite irregular um, in how they're um, how they're structured. And what that means is the the molecules cannot line up in a regular arrangement, which actually means these are often liquids. So this would be an unsaturated fat, but just like an alkene is an unsaturated compound. Um, Unsaturated fats have got one or more double bonds. And they are generally, not always, but generally going to be liquids. And it's actually very easy to do a chemical test to prove that a fat is unsaturated. It's exactly the same as a test for an alkene. You just test it with bromine water. If it is an unsaturated fat, the bromine water will go from orange to colourless. Right. The last thing we need to know is how we can actually uh, harden or reduce the amount of unsaturation in a fat. So if you have a vegetable fat, let's say um, let's say sunflower oil, we can actually do a chemical reaction to reduce uh, the number of double bonds in that compound. And what we actually do is we add hydrogen um, to the compound. So let's just represent a small section of our of our fat. Um, this will be joined onto another carbon atom in, in, in a chain. Let's just put brackets around to show it's going to continue. Um, and I'm going to have two hydrogen atoms attached to there. So this would be our unsaturated fat. What we can do is add hydrogen to this. So if we react it with H2 hydrogen and we use a um, nickel catalyst, and we have to use a temperature of 60 degrees C. The examiners are very, very strict that you do learn this exactly. So if you use a temperature of 60 degrees C, you can add your hydrogen across this double bond. This is very similar to the bromine water test, but this time using hydrogen or even polymerization, except we're just adding hydrogen, not another alkene monomer. Um, but we basically add hydrogen across that, which turns this into a saturated fat. So I've said before that um, unsaturated fats are generally liquids, saturated fats are generally solids. If you only get rid of a few of the double bonds, and not all of them, you can make a solid fat, but one that spreads very easily. So it makes spreadable fats. And a good example of this is margarine. This is actually how margarine is made. You um, add hydrogen to an unsaturated fat using a nickel catalyst in 60 degrees C. Marge, margarine. Uh, this section is actually only for higher tier, but foundation need to know all of this stuff.